Cody from We Have LOS. So, Modi, I copy and go ahead with the next step. All stations from on the briefing room, uh, we just have had the loss of signal. And so, um, this is the end of the Rosetta mission. Thank you and goodbye. Ouais, bah c'est ouais, la, la fin de la, de la belle aventure. Euh, ouais, enfin, digérer un peu, je pense, et puis ouais. Ouais, un, peu, un peu triste aussi, bien sûr. Ça fait longtemps qu'on qu travaille tous sur cette mission. On a passé des, des jours, des nuits, des week-ends. Donc, on, voir la fin, c'est euh, ouais, un peu triste, bien sûr. La passivation, c'est un, un travail de plusieurs mois, en fait. Oui. Parce que la, la sonde n'a pas été conçue pour être éteinte. Oui. Euh, donc on a dû euh, faire des, de développer un patch, euh, donc ça a pris pas mal de temps, le tester, le valider. C'est un travail qui a, qui a duré euh, depuis le début de l'année. Donc on l'a chargé la semaine dernière à bord, et on l'a activé hier et aujourd'hui. Well, the whole story of today started with the decision of uh, switching off all safety net because the last you want to see is uh, the images stop by the, the camera, by the onboard system decide I have a little glitch in temperature here or I don't feel comfortable with the sensor reading. Indeed. So this was all turned off so we were in free without a fall without any monitoring and then uh, followed the predefined sequence that was on board and uh, delivering the data to the flight dynamics team that uh, evaluated the last uh, maneuver performance and gave us the exact moment of uh, impact to an accuracy of about a minute or so. That's amazing. And then we, we uploaded with this knowledge a new sequence that <coughs> overtook the last hour to make a good sequence even much better. Indeed. And that's the, uh, the sequence that was executed and gave us the, uh, the wonderful images now. So it's a lot of interaction, a lot of decision points, where are we, and, um, and are we good, and uh, we were. Indeed. And what were you thinking when you saw the pictures coming down and they were better and better all the time? Um, well, we have seen high resolution images before for a little while in safe ellipses so we were we, we knew that we are safe it's pericenter we go out to the upper center so yeah. no worry now the emotion was different so uh, the images got closer and closer so we followed the descent from 16 kilometers reached 12 and then 8 and uh, so you felt like oh, oh oh we are getting closer closer it's five now four kilometers we are close to the last hour prepare and then the images got not only in higher resolution also smaller to keep up with the high imaging cadence indeed so it was a, a real really in, a very intense feeling of what happened now with the spacecraft it was our eyes basically looking down all the uh, the, uh, the many hours of descent up to the last yeah. minutes and clong clong so really every five seconds getting an image showing a different scenery as you mm -hmm. You know, we, we've come to the culmination of all these years of effort with a grandiose finale. It, it really was a fitting end to such a fantastic mission, but it's not the end. We, we have this mixture of sadness because we've lost a family member. This spacecraft is in people's lives for many, many years. And even for me, for only three years, it has become a family member, and now that family member is gone. Mm. But the data that it has taken will enable us to do an amazing amount of science and that will be the legacy of this mission. This fantastic mission already will become even bigger because of the science we can do in the future. You've got the shape of the duck in the first place. This 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 comet looks like a duck, is bilobed. We've seen bilobed comets before but not like this. We have analysed it to get a better feel of the fact that it, ha it appears to be caused by two comets coming together. The comet itself is covered in a layer of dust. We have fantastic measurements of the internal makeup of the comet itself using comets but also the radio science measurements. It appears, to, it appears to be very fluffy and porous inside and that kind of matches up with some of the, mission, the, the uh, emissions of dust that we see in the coma. 
So we have also the pictures of the surface to give us an idea of the morphology, the evolving geology that we're seeing, which is a new science for comets because we've been there for so long. We've been there for over two years. We've seen changes in the surface of the comet. We will then go back and see how that has changed over time and how that has uh, in, in, imparted changes in the outer atmosphere, changes in the activity that we see. So we match all of that together to get an idea of how the comet works. The stuff that's coming off, we've been measuring that, the molecules. We've got an idea of matching the water that we have coming off the comet and looking at Earth and saying it doesn't match very well. But there are organics on there that mean that possibly comets could have delivered the ingredients for life many, many years ago. And also the other molecules that we've been detecting give an inference of how the comet formed many, many years ago and maybe a little bit about the evolutionary processes that have gone on. So you add all of this together to get an idea of how this comet formed and how you put that into the broader picture of the solar system's evolution since the beginning. And even some of the material we're detecting could be primordial in that it was there before the, big, the sun ignited. So yeah. there's broad ranged implications here and that's just scraping the surface. We've only just started. For me, it's just uh... I say it's a great day. Um, also, for me, it's not that I'm uh, depressed, put it like this. I, I'm proud that we achieved with this mission what we want to achieve. And it's, so to say, the end of a big project. And for me, it's great that we successfully will finish it. We have a lot of data. The scientists are happy, which is very important. And I think we have demonstrated in ESA that we can really successfully implement such a very, very ambitious mission and that we can operate it. It was the first mission around the comet nucleus. The navigation there is very difficult. To get there is difficult. To build a spacecraft that lives for 12 years and then really works like it should work, you know, long uh, journey. And then it has to perform the last two years of that long journey. And that all came together. It uh, worked as we wanted to work it. And uh, I think we can, and I always say we, it was a big team who worked on that, that we can be proud of what we have achieved. No, kyllä tämä aika emotionaalinen hetki on, kun mä olen henkilökohtaisesti ollut tässä touhussa mukana vähän yli 22 ja puoli vuotta. Eli se oli huhtikuun no, huhtiku alussa 1994, kun Helmut Rosenbauer tuli käymään meillä tuolla ilmatieteen laitoksessa ja ehdotti, että osallistuisitko tähän laskeutujaan. Muistuta vielä meitä kaikkia, mitä Rosetassa on Suomessa tehty osia? No Rosetassa on tietysti, tähän emo-alukseenhan rakennettiin lähinnä ohjelmiston puolta tähän, näihin, näihin plasmainstrumentteihin. Sitten osallistuttiin tähän alkuaineanalysaattoriin, tähän Kosimaan. Ja, tai itse asiassa aineanalysaattorin Kosimaan, joka on mitannut näitä, muun muassa pyrkinyt löytämään näitä orgaanisia yhdisteitä sieltä. Ja sitten tähän laskeutumisalukseenhan me tehtiin Suomessa niin muistiyksikköä ja sitten myöskin instrumenttia. Ja, että aika monipuolista. Siinä on oikeastaan niin kuin kuuden, yhteensä kuuden elementin kanssa me on oltu tässä koko komissiossa mukana. Se mikä tulee semmoisena mieleen ja mikä on niin kuin tieteellinen voitto tästä, että tuota, Tämä niin kuin kertoo hyvin, kaikki mitä me on nähty, siitä lähtien kun me alettiin nähdä tämä kometta, niin kaikki on ollut yllätystä. Siis se muoto oli totaalinen yllätys, sitten se, myöskin se, sen pinnan kovuus, vaikka se on muuten hyvin höttönen kappale, että se pinta oli niin kova, että se filee pomppasi siitä, niin se oli aikamoinen yllätys. Vielä silloin, ennen kuin se laskeutui, niin oli spekulaatio, että se on niin pehmeitä, että sinne upotaan. Mm. Että tota, et miten vähän me tiedetään vielä meidän taivaankappaleistamme, joilla me ei ole käyty. Ja tämä on niinku tieteen kannalta sellainen, että siis tutkittavaa riittää niin kauan kuin vaan meillä ihmisillä riittää uskoa, että siihen kannattaa investoida.